In this video, I'm going to go over the difference between the public and private access specifiers in C++. So the public and private access specifiers modify where the members of a class can be used. So we'll go over an example here. The first thing I'll do is include the string library because we're going to make a class that has a string member variable. We'll make a class called employee to represent employees. And we'll use the public access specifier first. We'll say here, public colon and then string name to define the name member variable that's going to be a string. Now the public access specifier allows this member variable to be used and accessed outside of this class here. So for example, in our main function, we could use and access that member variable. So we could say here, employee, employee one, and we could say employee one dot name is equal to Kevin. And we could output this name as well. So we'll say see out employee one dot name and then end L to put a new line on it. And if we save and run this, we'll get Kevin as output. So with the public access specifier, we can access this member variable outside of this class definition here. With the private access specifier, we can't. So for example, here I'll say private, maybe I'll put it below public. I'll say private double salary. So now we have another member variable called salary that's going to be a double, and that'll be the employee's salary. But because we're using this private access specifier, we can't actually access this member variable outside of the class definition here. So here, if I try to say employee one dot salary is equal to 50,000, and we try to save and run this, we're going to get build failed. And it says salary is a private member of employee. So we have a compiler error here. And the compiler error is telling us that we can't access this member variable because it's a private member of employee. So that's the key difference. When we use the private access specifier, we can't access that member outside of the class. And this applies to functions as well. So here we could make a public function member. So we'll say here, maybe double get salary. And this will return the salary. So we'll say here, return the salary. And we'll also make a function called set salary. So we'll say void set salary. And this function will take in a parameter that's going to be the potential salary for the employee. And we'll set salary equal to this potential salary. So here we have two public member functions, set salary and get salary. Get salary is going to return the salary. Set salary is going to set the salary. Now with these functions, we're able to use the private member variable. We're able to use salary. We're even able to return the value as well. And that's because these functions here are members of the class. They do have access to that private member variable. So we could call these functions as well. We could say down here, employee one set salary to 50,000. And then we could use get salary to get access to the salary. So we could say see out salary colon, and we'll output employee one dot get salary. And we'll put an end line there. So we save and run this, we should now get a salary of 50,000 there. And here we're able to access these member functions, set salary and get salary, because they were defined using the public access specifier. Now, when we have private member variables like this, like salary, it's common to see getter and setter functions that are responsible for managing access to that data. So here, the get salary function, we would call this a getter function. And we would call this set salary function here, a setter function. And this is a common pattern to see, not just in C++, but in object oriented programming languages in general. Because what we're doing here is what's called encapsulation, where this salary piece of data is managed by this class and access to it is restricted and protected by these functions here. And there might be reasons why we want to do that. So for example, here we said potential salary. That's what we call the parameter. 
what we could do is make sure the salary is valid before we actually set the private member variable salary to that potential salary. So for example, we could say if the potential salary is less than zero, that doesn't even make any sense because you can't have a salary of less than zero dollars. That would be pretty bad if that was the case. So if the potential salary is less than zero, we're gonna set salary equal to zero. Otherwise, we'll set salary equal to the potential salary. So now we're kind of guarding access to this private member variable. And we're actually doing something with the input before we actually set it. So here we can then say set salary to negative 100. And if we save and run this, we should get a salary of zero because our member function is guarding access to that member variable salary. So we'll put this back to 50,000 now. Let's also do an example of a private member function. So let's make a private member function that's gonna calculate the bonus that the employee gets that year based on their salary. So here we'll say double calculate bonus. And this function will return the salary times 0 0.10. So in other words, their bonus is gonna be 10% of their salary. So this function has been defined as a private member function. So because it's private, we won't be able to access it outside of the class. So if we try to say employee one dot calculate bonus, and we save and try to run this, we'll get an error. And it says calculate bonus is a private member. So I have the same issue again. So similar to our situation with this private member variable here, we do this for a reason. We don't just make functions private for no reason at all. Making member functions private, like calculate bonus here, can be part of what's called information hiding, where our class sort of hides the secrets of how it exactly works. And we leave the public functions as sort of the way that the outside world is able to access and work with our class. And we would use our private functions for the things that are more about the implementation of our class and exactly how it works. So in this case here, how the bonus is calculated. So what we could do is make a public member function and that public member function will actually print out the bonus. So here we'll say void print bonus. And this function here will output the name of the employee, followed by bonus colon, followed by the actual bonus itself by calling the calculate bonus function. And to call the calculate bonus function, we can just say calculate bonus and call it like a regular function because the function is defined as part of the class itself. So now we can call print bonus down here. So here we'll say employee one dot print bonus. And if we save and run this, we should get a bonus of 5,000 because 10% of 50,000 is 5,000. And that's what we get. And so that's the difference between public and private access specifiers in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.